we will start with the sponsor snapshot. So just to remind the principle, the sponsor snapshot is uh, the snapshot of three minutes. So uh, the people that will talk now have to take care about the timing because this is three minutes. Uh, and then we will have uh, six snapshots from our sponsors, Beckman, Agilent, Peak um, Analysis, uh, Ovisio, Argolite, Lab Services, and our two uh, invited startups, Ozimis and Andaman 7. So the first is Beckman. So thank you very much. So I'm Jean-Claude Traoré. I'm sales manager for Lifetime Automation at Beckman. So I'm in the company since a long time now. So I have very old customer in the room. Thank you very much. So what is Beckman? So Beckman is a very historical uh, supplier of automation. Uh, our main uh, liquid handler product line is a biomech, and we also have a group of integration that is located in Indianapolis. And the goal of this group is to generate integration module to build, I will say, complex station. So the main change um, during the last year was Beckman was acquired by a larger group that is named ABCIX, uh, named uh, Danaer, sorry. And this group includes several companies like Leica, ABCIX, Molecular Device, and also Beckman, of course, now. And we changed our approach within the last years because our goal now, and this is, the, I will say, the baseline that is to provide, I will say, validated and verified solution. And now we are working with our sister's company and our inside in-house product in different fields, and we provide, I will say, dedicated application and ready-to-use application in this market and expertise in this market. So on the genomics market, so we work a lot with our own product for DNA extraction, next generation sequencing, etc. We also have a good collaboration with a sister company that is Molecular Device for colony picking, and we have different type of installation in this area. On the cellular environment, so we work a lot, of course, with molecular devices for eye content screening device. We have our own product line of flow cytometry, and you will get a presentation tomorrow from one of our customers on this, on this topic. And uh, we work also with Leica for many imaging devices. And in terms of proteomics, so ABCIX is a provider of mass spectrometry devices, and we provide now several solutions including bioanalysis for small and large molecules, protein characterization, metabolomics, etc. And Beckman culture of automation will be across all this, uh, I will say, field of application. So because I have just three minutes, so just to show you what could be done, so this is an installation done um, recently in United Kingdom that is used for a, um, a which will show green, green technology, so to provide new enzymes for bio, uh, biofuels, etc. So it includes a colony picker, it includes a liquid handler for all, I will say, molecular biology tasks. The colony picking will be used to select the right, I will say, clones, and this will be analyzed by different means, including a camera for Leica, and also different screening, uh, I will say, analysis of uh, enzyme activity by uh, different means. We work also a lot with ABCIX, and uh, for example, we now provide dedicated solution for different type of market that we can deliver now to you. And if we talk about um, cellular activity, this is also an example of a system recently installed, and we'll have still our biomech product for system uh, product preparation, and we will have different type of eye content screening analyzer. And again, tomorrow you will get a presentation from Institut Gustave Roussy showing what we could provide in this environment. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jean-Claude. Uh, you respect the timing. What is your... Hello, good morning. Uh, I will speak about some of our Agilent automation solution. So I'm... Serge Desmoulins, I'm the product specialist for uh, automation uh, portfolio within Agilent, supporting different countries in Europe, including all French-speaking countries. Today, I will introduce you a solution named Bravo SMAP, is a protein purification solution. Uh, the idea is to 
prepare sample at a analytical scale, uh, mainly say prepare sample before a LCMS analysis in proteomic world, and the technology is based on what we call um, high throughput microchromatography. The starting point is the Bravo. Uh, let's say most of you know it or use it. So it's based on the standard Bravo. The specific SMAP Bravo is built with a special head. Uh, let's say it's a 96 head for pipetting. That is standard, I would say. But for the SMAP part, there is a specific design to allow to load a tips with a solid phase at the end. We name this a cartridge. And the solid phase here at the end is like a microcolon. It's why we speak about microchromatography. Based on that, the idea is to choose different solid phase to address different workflow. So in a proteomic world, we can make affinity protein purification with protein A, protein J colon. That's a protein with affinity for anti antibody. Uh, we also have a streptavidin cartridge. Let's say it's the Swiss knife uh, for uh, affinity protein-protein uh, affinity. We also have solution for cleanup uh, with two different reverse phase for peptide cleanup before LCMS analysis. Uh, we also have titan oxide or uh, iron-3 NTA cartridge. These two phase are typically phase for phosphopeptide enrichment. So for people who don't hear, titan oxide iron NTA for phosphopeptide enrichment. Also for peptide mapping, sometimes it's interesting to make a fractionation and we have a, a ion exchange cartridge. So it's based on a cartridge. Sorry, it's small, you can really not see it. And with this cartridge, we will load it with a syringe, 96 syringe like this. And the idea is that we make what we call positive displacement. So we load the sample or the elution buffer or whatever in the syringe. We load the cartridge and push through. It's why we speak about positive displacement. So we choose the way to push through the cartridge. And very important, we choose the speed and the flow rate. So it's why we speak about liquid chromatography. And last but not least, uh, so Bravo is driven by VWorks software, very open software to program uh, a protocol. Some of you know it. Uh, for this specific application on VWorks, we put uh, an additional skin to dedicate a very simple user interface to allow any kind of technician or scientist uh, to use the automation device without any skills in automation or programming, just by filling uh, the cell. Uh, in that case, it's a, it's a, a peptide cleanup protocol. The user just needs to fill uh, the volume he wants, uh, the flow rate, so the speed, to make the liquid chromatography, and press go. That's it. Three minutes. Thank you. So good morning, everyone. So first, I would like to thank the committee for this opportunity. So Argolite is a small French company. Uh, we still consider ourselves as a startup, but uh, uh, we still wanted to contribute in some way to Elrig. So that's so that's why we are now a sponsor. Anyway, let's dive into. So Argolite, uh, what we do is that we produce simple and convenient tools to assess the quality of any fluorescence-based system. So it means microscopes. It also means uh, micro well, um, well-placed readers, uh, slide scanners, or any tool that uses fluorescence uh, as a mean. So how do we uh, produce this simple and convenient tool and assess the quality of those systems? We have two tools uh, for you. The first one is that we can produce geometrical, non-photobleaching, multispectral patterns that are fluorescent, of course. 
and which are extremely precise, down to 150 nanometer. And we, um, we uh, couple this uh, hardware tool with the, software, soft, uh, with the software tools that are designed to uh, that are designed for convenience and speed to help you assess your machines quickly and efficiently. So let's dive into one example. So let's say you want to test a microscope. So we, you will use this hardware uh, slide from Argolite. This is a slide, microscope slide form factor, but we will also have uh, well plates form factor. And it, it, in uh, each of our hardware tool, you will find a series of patterns there are 3D patterns, 2D patterns, and for this example, we will use the intensity patterns. We have 16 well-defined non-photobleaching linearly increasing um, intensities. So you just take an image of this uh, pattern and then put it in our, in our software, and then that's it. You don't have anything else to do. The software find the 16 levels, plot you the increasing, compare it to uh, a linear curve it is supposed to be. It gives you all the numerical data and gives you some relevant parameters for the linearity. And because the slide is stable, the idea is that you will perform this kind of test, for example, before and after a campaign of measurements or every day as part of the routine measurements. So you can just click on compare response and the software will compare your actual response to the one you stored and you can see if there is a fluctuation in your systems in terms of, for this particular example, in terms of intensity. So you can be sure that the data you are produced are comparable to the one you did, for example, the day after or even a year before. So why that? Three case. First, to ensure data reliability for one instrument. I could say you make measurements before and after your campaign. If there is no modification, you know the data uh, is good and it's comparable to the one you did before. Then each uh, hardware we produced is uh, warranted for three years, but can last for longer. So it means that if you use the same system with the same slide for three years, you can ensure the comparability of all the uh, tests you did for this time, uh, for this period. And then the first uh, use case is you have different lab in different places. If you have the same type of, if you have the same well plate readers on different places, you can compare data and ensure that data produced in France and China, for example, are comparable. Uh, this one, this was, was this was one example. We also do chromatic aberration, chromatic localization, distortion, uh, intensity measurement, as I showed, homogeneity measurements all these kind of tools we can provide. Uh, we have a poster, which is the P1, we have a booth, and we, uh, if you are in France, uh, you can ask your local Zeitz dealer, because we are now partners with them uh, for maintenance contracts. Thank you very much for listening. My name is Joël again. I work for Ovisio Imaging Systems, and I would like to talk to you in three minutes about <laughs> real-time cell monitoring. For us, it started with a professor from the university, much involved with imaging, and especially here about his device for space. Of course, very soon he was asked, well, professor, down to earth, what can you do more with that? And for Ovisio, in fact, he established the, the fundamentals. He was using his invention, his technology, and the name is Differential Digital holographic microscopy. Yeah, what's in the name? But it all comes down to the fact that we use imaging and we use light in the 3D setup. So instead of 2D imaging, we bring it to the next level. And I think this morning some of you have seen our story for suspension cell monitoring. That was by Professor Goodman, who is one of our clients. Well, here uh, we, we try to show you that sampling from bioreactors is, well, it needs a lot of handling. Then you have the staining. Then you can automate it, of course, somehow. But it needs time. And afterwards, you lose your sample, or you need to come over in the weekend. So all this, we thought, well, maybe we can help. Of course, 
there exist integrated systems. They have a cost. They need space. There are pros, there are cons. And where we think we can help is with inline monitoring. So we do no sampling, no staining, especially for counting cells for performing viability. We do not need to stain the cells. I can go to the principal later on our booth for, for who is interested. But it comes back to the fact that we do a continuous monitoring of your cells. Let's say each minute we take an image. Each 30 minutes you have a result out of those images. That's for statistic reasons. And then we can give you an estimation about the cell count, about the cell viability, and maybe more. What see, you see down here, and I will use the pointer, is your grow curve with your viability, or your total cell density, your viable cell density, and all this at any time. But of course, it has always also access at single cell level to your data, so you can inspect it. No magic, no black box. This was for suspension cells, and we have been approached by other, other users, scientists, pharma companies, to have also solutions for adherent cells. Here you see, for example, multi-layer vessels where people have to establish confluency and give an estimation of the cell count sometimes. There we can help too. So what we do is, uh, as you can see, some imaging on that. We calculate the confluency, we give a lot of morphologic parameters, and all this in a non-invasive way. So no need to detach your cells, to sample them once again. Our video is six years old. So and what have we done in these six years? Well, here's an overview. It's really, it's showing everything what we, we did or what we will bring to the market, of course. Maybe an example is this is a bioreactor that is made for stem cells. It is made by Paul Life Sciences in Hoogarden. Maybe you know it from Imbef, <laughs> which is a brewer. Well, in Hoogarden, yeah, other things are made. And this is a, a 200 layer bioreactor from them, where we have to image the top layers and give an idea, an estimation of the confluency. Well, in these three minutes, I would encourage you more to have a talk to us, to come to our website, and maybe uh, you will find also details on our poster, where we did some benchmarking. Of course, it's needed to convince you. Where is your booth? My booth is at number 16, if I remember correctly. So, post Thank you, the same. Yes, hello. Um, I'm going to take a slightly more general approach and talk to you about screening uh, cell lines, which is something a lot of companies are going to want to do at the moment, or are in fact doing at the moment. They want to be able to increase the amount of um, cell lines they can run and increase the amount of testing they can do on these cell lines. So we've developed some automation work cells that will achieve this. Uh, Way. Okay, so um, we have a standard enclosure system, we, which looks like this, um, with large windows so you can access any of the instruments during the running of the system. Uh, we site the incubators underneath with um, lifts to lift the plates up into the systems so that you can save space and they fit into their much more um, dynamic design. Um, the actual system itself has a downflow, so you can actually open any of the portals and not compromise the internal environment. <clears throat> we also have internal CCTV, so that you can sit at home on a Sunday evening and see what your cell lines are doing. Some people do that. Um, <clears throat> right. That works. Okay. Very quick slide to show how the system works. This is going to be important in a moment when I come on to our Connect system which enables you to add instruments on the fly during a run, such as if, if you've got a seven-day incubation, at the end of that you want to look at your cell confluence, you can add something like a cell a Ni1 or a cell of Isto or something, or if you want to add a high-content screening system. 
Um, very expensive instruments, you don't want them tied up on an automation work cell where they're going to be sitting there while you've got long cell incubations. Um, this is actually, I'm going to run, use this as an example. This is a system we did for a pharmaceutical company recently. Um, this enabled them to uh, increase their cell screening capabilities by four orders of magnitude. Um, in fact, they're now able to do so many cells, they're contracting out the work cell as well. <clears throat> so just to go through the design, it's an antibody factory. They're basically growing up different uh, B cell lines, and they're actually looking for specific antibodies. This work cell does the whole process for them with just a couple of operators running um, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of samples at a time. Um, so just to run through them. So there's a whole series of incubators at the front end here, and the cells are, are basically seeded to the plates from here put in the incubators for variable incubation times. Uh, once the confluence is checked and we know that the cell lines are, are good, they go through to the screening cell, and the screening cell then enables you to plate them out um, to run various compounds with the cells and to analyze the cells. And from that analysis data, we then determine a pick list, and the cells are then picked from here. So you get the positives, the positives are then split so that one uh, part of the positives go through to secondary screening. The other part goes through into a, a mouse or something here, into a minus 80 store, so that they're then um, stored away for subsequent retrieval. Um, the connection between each of these work cells, which can be run as individual work cells, is by a conveyor system, which then moves the samples from work cell to work cell to work cell. Um, these are bi-directional, so we can move plates back if you want to uh, check something. The whole system uses a Harmony software package, so anybody can control that system with about 10 minutes training. I can show you the software. Uh, it's on our stand later on. Um, that's just a picture of the internals. Uh, you can actually see the connection between the work cells there. Okay, so a little bit more about the Connect system. I'm still okay for time, I think. <coughs> this enables you to move instruments into and out of the system on the fly. Um, so we use an industrial connector, which enables you to transfer power. It transfers services. We can even pass liquid through this connector. It's just factory automation in actual fact. Um, any instrument you add, it has, we have software recognition. So if we, for example, add an in-cell, the system recognizes it's an in-cell and gives you the menu list for the assays you've written around an in-cell. So very, very easy to control and use. Um, the doors here, you would never actually open both doors, uh, but this is what we call a connect portal. And so as soon as the door is deactivated and opened, you get a, down, a downflow of air, which then maintains the internal um, environment inside while you're moving the um, connect car in and out. We have a video of it on our stand if you'd like more information. Um, the actual carts themselves um, actually have a turntable to enable you to move. For example, if you put a multi-drop in on one, you wanted to move it around so you could access the reagent trains, you could actually do that internally, like so. Um, we've also done this with incubators. Um, one of the big things with, okay, all right, I'm going to come to the end now. If you want to know more, please come along to our booth. Thank you, David. Thank you very much. Good morning, uh, my name is Frank van Loop. I work for Lab Services. Lab Services is a Dutch company. We are located in Breda and we are um, into laboratory uh, automation, into integration of systems into one big application. Um, we've been in the market for over 20 years and um, we have um, a lot of in-house developments done so far and um, we are always working on, on new ones. Um, of course, we have a team of uh, experts for uh, all kinds of jobs, uh, software guys, uh, hardware guys, and um, yeah, well, uh, of course we have a website before I forget, so that's labservices.nl. I want to uh, introduce you two of our products today. The first one is uh, called Heron, which is basically a package consisting of a, a robot arm with a software package and some plate managing uh, tools. 
and we had that in several uh, um, variations from a smaller one to a big one using uh, plate dispensers. Um, the goal of the, the Heron is to provide you with a compact and portable system that we can put on your own workbench, so you don't need uh, a whole new special designed table for this. Um, it's flexible. Uh, we can do you. Uh, we can use free mode teaching. So if you want to change instruments yourself, that's also possible. Um, and basically, we can integrate a Heron with any microplate device. Um, and because of the special design of our stackers, um, you don't have to teach every plate in the, the stackers. Um, it's a very um, robust approach that we use. Well, two of our examples of the Heron principle. Over here, it's a Heron using two plate dispensers. Um, plate dispensers are carrying about 70 standard microplates each um, and use only 20 by 20 centimeters as a uh, workspace. So it's, it's a very um, economical way of storing plates and providing plates to an application. And the nice thing about this one is that we also put on a lid lifter. And the lid lifter is a device that we developed and that can turn any um, standard PCR machine, any top loading machine to an automated uh, system. And we have already done that for uh, high content screening uh, readers as well. On this side, you see an example of a Heron similar to the one that we have on, uh, on our booth, and which is, by the way, booth 31. Um, and in this example, we had a sealer and a seal peeler connected by a robot and a stacking uh, solution. Our main product is a Plate Butler. Plate Butler is an integration software package with a large uh, uh, scheduling capacity as well. It uses um, nowadays a, a drag and drop principle and using clients we can connect basically any uh, lab instrument that can be connected to our uh, computer. We can connect it to our software and we can work with it and integrate everything into a big application. Um, and since we are brand independent, we also have uh, always look at what's already in your infrastructure, what's already present, and sometimes, or very often, we can connect the existing instruments uh, also into the application. Recently, we have um, introduced a new version of Plate Butler, which nowadays is more drag and drop, more user friendly. So, um, also our software with a yeah, a very short training. Most users in a lab can develop their own applications and already start uh, working with an automated platform uh, without a large uh, training. And that's about it. If you want to know more, again, we are at booth 31 in that room, and uh, well, we're happy to ask any or to answer any questions. Thank you. Hello, Hull. I'm Maite. I'm co-founder of Andaman 7. Andaman 7, it's a synchronized health record that you can share within a secure circle of trusted users for an optimized diagnosis. The company is mixed with both professional experience, with experience building um, medical messaging software like Maxi or Medibridge, but also personal experience, as the thought of the project came to the founder as he became patient, being diagnosed with leukemia, and then a few months later, he became the dad of a 10-year-old boy fighting his way against cancer, bone cancer. Thanks to modern medicine, they're both very fine today, and everything's well. And now Vincent, the founder, has got a whole team of us working very hard to improve healthcare communication and management. This is how we do it. This is the B2C side. This is our product, a mobile application. That mobile application, what it does is allows people to create health records. Once they created that, whether they are healthcare professionals, patients, caregivers, anything, once they create it, they can share those records or parts of the records 
with the people they find relevant. And then those people can collaborate on the records to create a really truly comprehensive health record while staying out of the cloud. The product is free for all, whether you're professional or not, it's free and it's an indirect business model, meaning that at some point we're gonna add some premium models, but whatever is existing now will always be free. And though we don't store any health data on servers, our synchronized server still is a big part of our offer, especially with B2B. We have a public API that allows any health actor to integrate with Anthem N7 so that they can be included in a patient's synchronized health record. Whether they are uh, connected devices, compiling medical fitness or health data, or medical institutions from everywhere in the world wanting to empower the patients, or research centers communicating with the trial patients in a fast and secure way. That's not it. <laughs> and unlike Andaman, which is an island that was the last to be communicating with the whole world, what we want is that healthcare be a part of the collaboration revolution. Because just like Airbnb transformed travel, Uber transformed transport, we want Andaman 7 and its partners to transform healthcare. So if you're ready to be the change that you want to see in the world, just come and sit with me at Boost 37 and we'll talk. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, today I'm going to present to you Cohortis. Um, Cohortis is um, an online platform that helps clinical research organizations to automate their image-based clinical trials. Um, actually, we're a startup, but um, our history started four years ago in a CHU, so the, the University Hospital of Liège. Um, one of their members or staff started creating an open source piece of software to help uh, any hospital in the world to integrate their um, imaging systems. Um, you have to know that it's very complex to integrate those. It's, it's still very old fashioned to transfer uh, images. A lot of hospitals still work with uh, CDs. So um, Sebastian Jodogne, uh, who is the member of staff of the CHU hospital, created this piece of software and then, um, well, he actually won the most prestigious prize an IT guy can actually ever win. Uh, it's the Free Software Foundation um, that granted him the, the prize for open, speed, open source software. And based on that success, uh, we decided to, um, to create a spin-off. It's the first spin-off of the, of the Hospital of Liège. And um, we started analyzing what could be the potential commercial applications of this software. And we came up with many ideas. Uh, the first of which was, is actually Cohortis. Um, so this image um, management tool for uh, CROs. So image-based clinical trials, what is it? Who plays in it? Well, first of all, of course, the imaging sites are involved. So hospitals, they have to um, anonymize uh, images. They have to send them to the CROs. Currently, this happens via uh, UPS um, packages being sent from, from hospitals to CROs. Uh, and then they also have to send uh, fill um, visit reports. Uh, so a lot of paperwork. CROs have to follow up on the trial. So they, they play the role of the coordinator. They have to make sure that uh, the reading labs get the information. They have to make sure that the, uh, the imaging sites produce the required information. Uh, and the, finally, the, no, they also have to report to their, um, to their sponsors, so to the pharmaceutical companies. Finally, the reading labs, well, they have to re review that the, the quality of the images is correct, and also they have to provide a diagnosis of the a sample of images. Now, the pains that we have uh, been able to identify when uh, talking to CROs, is, uh, there, there are four pains, four main pains. It's very complex to integrate with the hospital, um, and that's where our open source software comes in. It's, it's, uh, it makes it plug and play. Um, every hospital has a different configuration. Second, um, it's very time consuming to do the follow-up of a trial. It's a lot of paperwork, uh, a lot of calls, emails, uh, receiving UPS packages and stuff. 
Um, and it's also very difficult to be compliant because of those uh, different, different channels. And also it's difficult to, to track who did what, so you need audit trails in order to be compliant. And last but not least, it's um, with all those different uh, communication channels, um, uh, there's a lot of delay in reporting and also in delivery. So what we do at uh, Cohortis um, is three things. We, well, we provide three applications. A first one that is uh, being installed in the imaging sites so that they don't have to um, well, they don't have the hassle anymore of, of anonymizing information and sending it through. The only thing they need to do is uh, match a patient with a subject ID, and once that's done, well, everything is semi-automated. The only need to do, the only thing they need to do is validate that images can be sent or not be sent. Um, the second application that we created is the one for the CRO. So that's uh, basically like a web application. You you log in. Well, same actually for for hospitals, but. Um, the, for zeros, it's in the cloud, and there they can see the images that arrive. They can assign images to uh, reading labs, and they can they can track uh, delays on delivery of images and stuff. Um, and finally, for the reading labs, well, they can download images, uh, review quality, and, and provide diagnosis. So, what have we gained with Cohortis? First of all, it's simple to integrate. It's plug and play. Uh, it literally doesn't take 10 minutes to, to train uh, a hospital staff to use the application. Um, it makes it for easy and fast for CROs to follow up, so they can, they, they no longer have to spend time sending emails and, and doing calls. They can concentrate on, on what they're actually supposed to be doing. Uh, we're compliant throughout, so we, we've uh, made sure to be uh, compliant with all the regulations that are in place. And last but not least, um, it, it enables um, the, the CRO to deliver his project on time and to do reporting as he's promised to his sponsor. So we're at booth 33, I think. Um, and uh, so I invite you to come and, and have a chat with us. Uh, but you can also visit our, our uh, website, which is cohortis.io. Thank you for your attention.